order. I know the debate's not starting for 20 seconds, but I'd like to say this is a heavily oversubscribed debate. There are already loads more people coming in the room that are already on the list. I'm going to be incredibly tough on interventions. Um, even with the allocated front bench speakers for the opposition and the, speak, uh, the honourable member who's debated is, we will only have about 20 minutes' time left. Therefore, interventions, if are accepted, will have to be brief, and therefore, people, please be mindful of that. I call order. I call the honourable member, um, Dr. Paul Monaghan, to move the motion. Thank you, Mrs. Main. Bovine tuberculosis (BTB) is a disease affecting beef and dairy cattle herds in England and Wales. While Scotland is officially free of the disease and Wales is increasingly considered to be bringing the disease under control, the incidence of the disease in England is rising. Bovine tuberculosis is caused by the organism Mycobacterium bovis. The bacterium is excreted by infected cattle onto the land they graze, where it survives in the soil. It can and is then passed to other cattle and other species, including badgers, rats, cats, deer, foxes, moles, hedgehogs, worms, and I understand even flies. The predominant mode of transmission in cattle, however, is nose to nose and, of course, through trading, which promotes it between herds. In recent years, the disease has spread extensively northwards and eastwards from areas of original prevalence in the southwest of England, and that spread continues today. In fact, the number of new herd breakdowns appears to double approximately every nine years, and in the last decade alone, the UK government has slaughtered 314,000 cattle otherwise healthy in an attempt to control the disease. Very briefly. spread that he is talking about would be far better controlled by regular cattle testing than a cull which simply isn't cost effective and is inhumane. The, the, the Honourable Member makes a valid point and I will uh, come to that myself uh, very shortly. In 2013, Mrs Main, more than 6 million BTB skin tests were performed in England in an attempt to identify the disease, leading to the slaughter of over 26,000 cattle. These tests are only 20 to 50 per cent effective. One quarter of herds in the South West and West Midland regions of England have been placed under movement restrictions at some point, and in the last decade, the rising incidence of the disease has cost the UK taxpayer over £500 million. Today, 20% of all new herd breakdowns are detected in the slaughterhouse, such as the ineffectiveness of current testing programmes. Yes, briefly. Very grateful to him for giving away costs per badger from culling are around £5,000 compared to just £700 for a badger vaccinated. Does he agree that not only is culling counterproductive and cruel, but it's also a vast waste of money? Uh, the Honourable Members ahead of me. Uh, I'm just coming to that point myself. In 2014, the UK Government's inability to bring the disease under control resulted in costs to the UK taxpayer of almost £100 million, with additional costs to farmers estimated to run to tens of millions of pounds annually. There is a significant human cost to this also. Bovine TB causes misery for farmers. I suspect many here today will have stories of farms effectively closed because of the disease, farmers made bankrupt, with sadly some farmers even taking their own lives, such as the impact of the failure to effectively address the disease on businesses. If the UK Government does not begin to manage the rising incidence of this disease in England, there will not only be an increase in the number of beef and dairy herds affected, but further geographical spread and consequent spiral in cost to the UK taxpayer over the next decade of potentially £1 billion. One second. That is a DEFRA figure, Mr Chairman. Happy to give way. Thank you, the Honourable Member. As he is a colleague in the DEFRA Committee, and it was mentioned earlier that some way to solve this is to have cattle testing more frequently. How does that resolve the issue? How does cattle testing resolve the issue and eradicate the disease? I think uh, the Honourable Gentleman flags up an important point, which again I will come to, but I think uh, we will both agree that this is a crisis which needs to be dealt with now. This crisis, uh, Mrs Main, affects English cattle farmers in the main. It affects their families and their communities, and that impact cannot be overstated. If the disease continues to increase unchecked in England, it will also begin to threaten herds in other nations that are currently free of the disease, like Scotland. 
Mrs May, I want to avoid that happening. Inexplicably, some hypothesise that the rising incidence of bovine TB in England is attributable to badgers. I say inexplicable because research shows that even in the remote areas of England, where bovine TB is rampant, 86% of badgers are clear of bovine TB, with just 1.6% of the badger population considered capable of transmitting the disease. The role of badgers in the transmission of bovine TB in cattle is then controversial. Badger culling was conducted under a number of schemes throughout the 70s, 80s and 90s. These included at different times the use of snaring, gassing, cage trapping and shooting. Many thousands of badgers were killed prior to the introduction of the Protection of Badgers Act 1992. However, no effort was made to empirically evaluate the effectiveness of badger cows relative to reducing bovine TB incidence in cattle until the Natural Environment Research Council initiated the randomised badger culling trial in 1998. This, yes, indeed, yeah. Woodruff of London University who says that this is a huge disappointment for evidence-based policy making because of the mismatch between killing badgers and the spread of bovine TB. It is indeed a, a, a huge disappointment and I spoke with the professor just the other day on that very point. The field trial that I mentioned ran for seven years to 2005 and was overseen by the independent scientific group under the chairmanship of professor John Bourne. The study found that reactive badger culling resulted in a significant increase in cattle TB incidence to the extent that reactive culling was abandoned early in the trial. Proactive culling of badgers resulted in an average reduction of approximately 23% in cattle TB incidence inside proactive culling zones compared to control areas, but an increase of approximately 24.5% on neighbouring land not subject to culling thought to be due to the perturbing impact of culling. The independent uh, scientific group concluded that badger culling can make no meaningful contribution to the future control of TB in cattle. Deficiencies in cattle testing regimes mean that cattle themselves contribute significantly to the persistence and spread of the disease in, the, in areas where TB occurs. That is, cattle are the disease reservoir. Cattle to cattle transmission is the main cause of disease spread to new geographic areas. Substantial reductions in cattle TB incidence could be achieved by improving cattle based control measures. And it was found unfortunate that agriculture and veterinary leaders continue to believe, in spite of overwhelming scientific evidence to the contrary, that the main approach to cattle TB control must involve some form of badger population control. No substantial or respectable body of scientific work has ever been produced to contradict the conclusions of the independent scientific group. In short, Mrs Bain, scientific evidence does not identify a causal relationship between the presence of badgers and a rising incidence of bovine TB in cattle, nor does scientific data suggest that culling badgers reduces the prevalence of the disease in beef and dairy herds. Indeed, yes. And, and, and I thank him for bringing this to the, to the House. He obviously, or not obviously, but I presume that many of this House will have a different opinion from the Honourable Gentleman who's put forward. In Northern Ireland, there's been a, a, a five year programme costing some uh, £5 million as well. At the end of all that, they are trapping badgers, testing them, vaccinating them, uh, and removing any that test positive. They decided this year, for the first time, that diseased badgers must, must be caught. Diseased badgers must be culled. So they, 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 after all that five years of, of deliberation, the decision is now they have to be culled. So what, what about the, the, the position of Northern Dr Ireland? Monaghan. I don't think uh, the Honourable Member's suggestion is borne out by scientific evidence. And indeed, the experience in Wales and in, in the Republic of Ireland is the contrary of what you're suggesting. In point of fact, Mrs Main... In a moment. In point of fact, Mrs Main, the data suggests that badgers are contracting TB from cattle rather than cattle contracting TB from badgers. Worryingly, there is also a very real possibility that other species may also be contracting TB from cattle and that this is not being monitored. 
It is an unavoidable truth, Mrs Main, that if the UK Government hopes to control BTB in English herds and to protect the wider environment through culling, it should logically cull not just badgers and cattle, but bats, cats, dogs, mice, moles, rats, hedgehogs, sheep, goats, llamas, slags, worms and even flies, all of which, all of which are capable of sustaining the disease. That proposition is clearly ridiculous. But it serves to highlight precisely how ridiculous the current persecution of badgers is, and that is exactly why the Welsh and Irish governments have abandoned badger culling, and why the European Union has never agreed with the UK's policy in this area. Yes. Culling never actually occurred in Wales, so you need to be reasonably accurate about his points. But he also ought to take note of the fact that the incidences of TB within the vaccination area of Wales are exactly the, the same as they are on the outside. There is no distinction between the two areas. So before he paints vaccination as the answer, he needs to look at the Welsh results. Absolutely. <laughs> I am arguing here today that the UK Government must begin to protect beef and dairy farmers in England, unalter planned programmes of action to begin reducing the disease in existing herds in England. Anything less does a disservice to English farmers and undermines their work in support of local economies. I'll give way. Thank you very much indeed for this intervention. Uh, is the Honourable Gentleman aware that the one animal which is attacking the hedgehog is actually the, is actually the badger, which have, uh, and that the hedgehog has declined by 50% over the last 15 years? And what advice can we do to end up protecting I'm going to stick to bovine TB, uh, frankly. I predict, Mrs Main, that the recently announced plans to extend badger culling to a further seven areas will result in further new herd breakdowns and increased prevalence of the disease across England. And I'll give way to the honour member. member. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. I had a, just for information, I had a herd of chital deer. We had put them all down for TB. And I don't believe the carrier was badgers. We think it was something else, probably a wild deer that came in. So we need to be, and I think, do you not agree with me, should we be putting more funds into actually tracing who else carries TB? I absolutely agree, and thank you for that helpful point. To make my point clear, uh, Mrs Main, it's worth noting that figures to May 2016 show that Wales has reduced new herd breakdowns by 14% without killing badgers, while at the same time bovine TB has increased in England by 26% along infection edge areas due to inadequate testing uncontrolled cattle movements and the distraction of killing badgers. In 2015, the British Veterinary Association stated that there is a disproportionate focus on badger culling in the public debate about bovine TB. I agree and would suggest that this focus is the result of the unscientific, ineffective, expensive and inhumane nature of culling policy. Additional public concerns in respect of wildlife protection and welfare also and the inappropriate use of public funds. Would the Honourable Gentleman give way? Indeed. And could I thank uh, the Honourable <coughs> Gentleman for giving way and con congratulate him on securing this debate. In your um, speech so far, you did mention the area of the skin test. How effective have you seen from evidence the skin test from a Northern Ireland perspective? I have found it has put animals down that should never have been put down. I'll come to the skin test shortly, but I think there are uh, more appropriate alternatives to that. Returning to the point about public funds, Mrs Main, it is instructive that the UK Government has never published the total cost of culling to the taxpayer or farmers. However, we know that the first two years of the two pilot culls in Somerset and Gloucester cost the taxpayer over £14 million. That includes policing costs. That equates to £5,766 per badger killed, compared with the estimated cost of just under £700 for badger vaccination, which was found in Wales. Briefly. I'm very grateful to the Honourable Gentleman. Uh, part of the trial calls are taking place in my constituency uh, of Tewkesbury, and it may be anecdotal, but the farmers there do assure me that the incidence of bovine TB in those areas has reduced since the trial calls began. I think it must be anecdotal then, because it certainly doesn't appear to be borne out by the scientific evidence. In 2016, Mrs Main, the UK Government admitted that full costs of culling in 2015 had not been worked out, but that policing costs alone for the three, year, three areas were just under £2 million. Additional costs to farmers of the cull repercussions have never been released. In January this year, it was reported that the European Commission 
provided the UK government with half of the entire European Commission's entire budget of 62 million euros to tackle bovine TB. 31 million euros, then worth 23 million pounds, went on just four programmes. This money, earmarked specifically for dealing with and controlling bovine TB in cattle, as opposed to badgers, is obviously now at risk because of Brexit. In sum, the UK government's current policy is estimated to waste an estimated £20 million per month, generating a cost of approximately £2 billion to the taxpayer by the 2038 target. In addition to costs, the UK government no longer collects data on humaneness. One wonders why. What are the actual costs, Minister, and what does data show on humaneness? Mrs Main, I am not arguing that we should do nothing. I am arguing that the UK Government should abandon the tuberculosis skin test as the primary means of identifying infection and new herd breakdowns, and adopt modern methods and technologies to address this disease. Specifically, the UK Government should adopt gamma interferon tests, that's blood testing, and robust systems of biosecurity. Combined with a coordinated badger vaccination policy in high-risk areas for bovine TB in England and restricted movement, this course of action would represent a more progressive and intelligent option than relatively screwed skin testing and redundant killing of badgers, and would realise results within months. It would also be more humane. I'll give way. I'm supportive of further research into vaccination, but is the honourable gentleman aware that there's a global shortage of uh, uh, bovine TB vaccine, which is the same vaccine as is used in humans? It needs 10 times the dose. It needs to be repeated every five years. So there is no possibility of having an injectable vaccine rollout at this time and has even been suspended in Wales. I don't remember that information. However, I don't really think it addresses the fundamental point that killing badgers isn't helping the situation either. Following the introduction of the regime that I've just uh, identified in Wales, the incidence of tuberculosis in cattle has declined sharply. A 30% decline over a 12-month period was recorded in 2012. The sharpest fall was in the area where the disease was at its worst. In Diffid, 36% fewer cattle were slaughtered over two years, a saving to the taxpayer of £6.5 million in compensation, and, of course, untold misery was avoided also. 84% of the public are against badger culling. Like scientists, the public know that culling badgers is cruel, unjustified and expensive. It divides rural communities, damages the balance of nature and perpetuates disease. It gives false hope to farmers and sets a dangerous precedent that we can ignore this disease. Minister, look to Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Recognise the importance of cattle welfare and husbandry. Combine that recognition with rigorous blood testing regimes and effective movement controls to reduce the risks of cattle to cattle transmission and introduce a centrally coordinated comprehensive badger vaccination policy in high risk areas for BTB in England. Start to reduce the incidence of this dreadful disease and stop the regressive and medieval practice of badger culling that diminishes our collective humanity. Thank you. Yeah.